All right, so let's start with series number three. We're almost out of the Eastern Conference, halfway through here. This is the first seed in the Metropolitan Division, the Carolina Hurricanes, taking on the first seed in the wild card in the Atlantic, the Boston Bruins. This is Rod Brendamore versus Bruce Cassidy on the head coaching side. One of the best all-around teams versus the perfection line. One team that's in total control and one team that plays on the edge. So between the Carolina Hurricanes, 54, 20, and 8, 116 points. The Boston Bruins, 51, 26, and 5, 107 points. Not much separates these two teams. But I'm going to tell you why I like the Carolina Hurricanes in this series. Again, I always at the end, I'm going to give reasons for both. But I'm going to tell you why I'm going with Carolina in this series. Stats on centerpieces. Well, let's start with the Hurricanes here. Sebastian Ajo, 79 games played, 37 goals, 44 assists, 81 points. Andre Svechnikov, 78 games played, 30 goals, 39 assists, 69 points. Thibaut Teravainen, 77 games played, 22 goals, 43 assists, 65 points. Vincent Trocheck, again, there's a lot more here on Carolina. 81 games played, 21 goals, 30 assists, 50 points. Neil Niederreiter having an excellent year. 75 games played, 24 goals, 20 assists, 44 points. A lot for stats on centerpieces for Carolina. And some of these goals, you might you might say, John, uh, Trocheck, Niederreiter, you're putting them in that same category. Look, guys, to be honest with you, if it was other teams, they'd be on the first or second lines. And sometimes they're not because Carolina is so deep. For the Boston Bruins, it's pretty simple. Your perfection line that you should know because they've been there for a long time. Brad Marchand. 70 games played, 32 goals, 48 assists, 80 points, another stellar season for Marshawn. David Posternock, one of the best goal scorers, Pasta, that we have in the league right now. 72 games played, 40 goals, 37 assists, 77 points. Patrice Bergeron, 73 games played, 25 goals, 40 assists, 65 points, and a plus 26. Even at this point in his career, Patrice Bergeron still remains to be one of the very best two-way forwards that we have in the league right now. Bar none, plain and simple. And Taylor Hall, I will mention this too because, again, embarrassment of riches for the Boston Bruins. 81 games played, 20 goals, 41 assists, 61 points. So for the most part, all these stats on these centerpieces are guys that have pretty much played the majority of the games in the season, all within the 70 to 80 range. They've all had tremendous production. They've all been positive plus players for the most part. So there's plenty of stars to go around. Now, premium defense. Now, this is on both sides of things, but especially for Carolina, I want to give them the advantage. And this might be some names and things that you don't know. But Tony D'Angelo, 64 games played, 51 points. He was a staggering plus 30 for the Carolina Hurricanes. Jacob Slavin also on the back end, one of the very best shutdown guys that we have in the league right now. 79 games played, 42 points, a plus 35. Brady Shea. Again, a second-line defense, but only on this team, I would imagine. He'd be a first-line on most others. He played all 82 games. He had 39 points. was a plus 22. I didn't put all the stats in there, but if you want to throw in Brett Pesci, Ian Cole, Ethan Bear. Uh, Ethan Bear hasn't got a chance to play a lot, but remember from a couple years ago, he was the first-line defense for the Edmonton Oilers. He's on the back end nowadays for the... Carolina Hurricanes just because they're so deep, not because of a demotion or anything else like that. On the other side, Charlie McAvoy, one of the very best as far as offense, too. 78 games played, 56 points, and a plus 31. Matt Grizzlick, I had to throw him in there. Not a lot of offensive production with 24 points, but he's a plus 22. He's a shutdown. So Hampus Lindholm, one of the big-time picks that the Boston Bruins were able to get for a first-round pick. And a couple other things there from the Anaheim Ducks. Just, again, 28 years of age, but he's already locked under contract, probably to about 34 or 35. 71 games played, 46 points is a plus 10 on the season. And he stayed even with the Ducks, who completely fell apart. And we talked about it at the beginning of the year. As far as the California teams, you thought about the Los Angeles Kings, San Jose Sharks, and the Anaheim Ducks. All of them at one point, especially late in the season, were all in a playoff push. They fell apart. The Ducks sold off. Hampus Lindholm was able to stay in that even range and was a plus 10 in just the shortened time that he spent over there from the Boston Bruins. So depth, again, both teams got it here. Seth Jarvis, Martin Natchez, Jordan Stahl, Jesper Fosk, Eric Halla, all hovering on that side again from around 40 points for both sides. 
Same goes for Boston between Charlie Coyle, Jake DeBrus, Craig Smith, all around 40 points. So, doesn't sound like much separates these two teams, huh? As far as stars, stats on centerpieces, premium defense, and depth. Let's go one step further here. Goalies. Frederick Anderson, 52 games played at 217 goals against. Absolutely incredible here. Again, moving on from the Toronto Maple Leafs now with the Carolina Hurricanes. You wondered whether or not Carolina may be screwed up as far as taking out Peter Mrazek, moving on from Alex Nedeljkovic. No, they did just fine. They were trying to cheap out some of the other goaltending. They got Frederick Anderson to try to stabilize it. Yes, he's a little bit older. He's had an excellent season. And Antti Ranta is not too bad of a backup there. He's been around for a while. 28 games played at 245 goals against in a 912 save percentage. Here's where it gets interesting here for the Boston Bruins. This is a Calder Cup candidate here for top rookie Jeremy Swayman in the pipes. Just 23 years of age. He played 41 games. He was a 23-14-3 record with a 241 goals against and a 914 save percentage. And Linus Olmark, former Buffalo Sabre, also played 41 games for the Boston Bruins. He was 26-10-2 with 245 goals against and a 917 save percentage. So between Swayman and Olmark, both 41 games appeared in. Both numbers are similar as far as their goals against and save percentage. Who are you starting between the pipes? Are you starting the 23-year-old? Are you starting Olmark, who's been around for a while but hasn't really had any playoff success because he hasn't really been in the playoffs? Who are you starting? So who wins the series and gives some reasons for both? Now, this might be one of those situations where there could be a little bit of inherent bias as far as what I've watched. Again, covered a couple games on ColorCast for the Boston Bruins, covered quite a few for the Carolina Hurricanes, probably in the 4-5 to five range. Every time I watch the Carolina Hurricanes... They don't have to wow me to be able to win this game. They're able to get it done offensively when they need to, score a key goal. They're able to shut other teams down. Carolina is very content to win a game 1-0, win a game 2-1. No problem. Everybody else on that side of between Rod, Brendan, Moore, I think Carolina is one of the best coached teams that we have in the NHL. Any way that you want to win a game, you can do it. If you want excellent goaltending and premium defense, you can do it. Carolina is absolutely wonderful. Now, within the last few games of the season, I will say this to you. Carolina hasn't played their best hockey. It's one of those situations, again, this might be a little bit of a bias here, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Carolina was at that point where you're resting guys. You've done so well in the season. You don't want to have any injuries. You just want to be able to do what you're doing. Close things down and not really go too crazy on the offense side, get things injured, put them in danger. For the Boston Bruins, it's been a hell of a run as far toward the last month for the Boston Bruins. Goaltending has been absolutely excellent between Swayman, again, he's very young, 23 years of age, and Linus Olmark, who have been very, very good. The perfection line has stayed the perfection line between Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, and Pasta, David Pasternak, and the depth scoring that they've gotten between Charlie Coyle, and Halla, and everybody else in there. Craig Smith. It's been wonderful here for Boston. But that depth on defense. Again, we talk about Hampus Lindholm, and you talk about Charlie McAvoy. It makes a lot of sense. You even throw Matt Grizzlick in there. Definite high plus percentage. This is going to be a very physical series here. Probably one of the most. The Boston Bruins play on the edge for a reason. It would not surprise me. Again, Brad Marchand has to do his very best to be able to, I wouldn't say stay out of the box, because he's definitely going to be in the box. He's going to throw some fist of cups, maybe give a couple licks in there like he usually does, figuratively and literally, and make it, a, make it a mess. You know, try to get Carolina off their game. But this is the interesting part for me. Carolina is one of those teams that cannot be swayed as far as the things that they do. So can Boston knock Carolina off their game and can the perfection line find a way to break through against Freddie Anderson or is the depth for Carolina too good all the way around who wins this series and give reasons for both so I'm going to make this sound pretty simple but it's probably going to be a lot more difficult than it actually is because Carolina doesn't have any questions as far as their defense because their stars can be stars and they can score in a snap of a finger, even though I can't really snap my fingers, that's all there. Carolina can do that, and their goaltending has been very, very solid. It leads me to believe that Carolina is going to be able to win this series, and I, I don't think that this is going to be one of those ones that Boston can win. 
unless they really sustain a key injury or something like that and Carolina can't recover from Aho, Svechnikov, or Tara Vinen, something has to be changed. Look, I think even the depth scoring is good enough for Carolina. But for Boston, if the perfection line is still the perfection line, if they can throw Carolina off their game, if they can continue to maybe get some more premium defense like Carolina has, even step a further as far as their plus-minus, they can absolutely do some damage. Boston is not one of those teams that should be slept on. But I look in the back line of this. Between Jeremy Swayman and between Linus Solomark, again, it goes back to goaltending, especially in this series, I definitely think it's going to. It plays the biggest part. You have a 23-year-old in pipes, or you also have... Linus Olmark, who played with the Buffalo Sabres, hasn't really played in a lot of meaningful games. That's really what it boils down to. Is Frederick Anderson going to be outplayed by Swayman and Olmark? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Even if Anderson has a poor game, it is one of those times where Carolina's defense is so good and even their forwards are two-way forwards and utterly responsible that it seems like Carolina would be able to win this series no matter what. This could be a series, I will say this. This might be the first time I throw this out there. I think Carolina wins this in seven games. I think Boston might be able to give this a little bit of a fight. If Carolina isn't going back and playing as sharp as they were, if they're playing a little bit more toward the end of the regular season, they're going to drop a couple games, and Boston Bruins should be able to make this interesting. I absolutely believe Taylor Hall is going to be another one of those guys that steps up and makes a difference. I think Carolina wins this in seven. But if the Boston Bruins can find a way in that perfection line and turn things around and kind of win that, and some of the other depth can win that, they can absolutely take this series from the Carolina Hurricanes. But it really falls down to this. Is Swayman and Olmark going to be able to be enough? They've been very, very good this year. Their numbers are excellent, don't get me wrong. But is it going to last? It lasts in the regular season. Is it going to last in the playoffs? First game of that series is going to be Monday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN.